thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, enough. This is Mr. Kelly. I'm at Kaiser Slaughter in Cape Town, we call it. I'm here with Mr. Sullivan, and I would like to thank my good friend, Mr. Sullivan, first, for getting us through Unit 1. That was so much fun, and it's going to be a tough act to follow, but I think we can do it here. The first thing we're going to do is try to relate some of this material back to what he did. So let's look at what we can do with some of these polynomials. You learned about factoring and long division and evaluating you know, the different polynomials. What I want you to do, I'm going to, this is like exploratory learning. You're going to explore, and at the same time, it's very contrived. We're going to look for something. Sorry, that's kind of how it works, discovery learning, right? So take this polynomial right here, this function, x to the third power plus 2x squared minus 3. That's a function, all right? That function there, I want you to look at it, and we're going to divide x minus 3 out of it. So we're going to use long division, and then tell me what we get. All right, then I want you to find f of 3. Pause the video and do that now. Go. All right, so here's how my long division looked out. All right, so I picked an example here where you had to remember to do a 0x, right, because we don't have an x term in there, so you had to put a 0x. You get through it all, you get a remainder of 42. That is awesome. Now let's find f of 3. We'll work that one out together. So f of 3 is going to equal, in this case, we're going to get, I'm going to use always use parentheses, 3 to the third power plus 2 times 3 squared and then minus 3. All right, so this is going to equal 27, right? That's 3 to the third power. 3 squared is 9. you got to do exponents first. And then 9 times 2 is 18. Don't forget to follow your Gemdas rules. We then subtract 3. All right, so when we do all this, I shouldn't, shouldn't forget things. But f of 3, when we're all done, equals this expression, which is 42. Oh, my goodness. Did you just notice something? I mean, I did. Look, 42, 42. They're both the same. Something else I want you to keep in mind. X minus 3, find F of 3. Okay, I'm going to keep our eye on that. What I want you to do now, now some of you took a long time getting through Unit 1 because you're not trying to learn it. So I'm going to ask you now, pause the video. It doesn't mean let it go and then copy it down later because it's faster. Pause the video and actually divide this out. Find that root there. Do the same thing for h. So pause the video, divide g of x, and divide h of x, and then find those two values right there. Go, pause the video. I'm so mad. Pause the video. All right, so here's what I got for g of x. When I divided this out, don't forget the zero. Ha <laughs> did that again. You got to go through. I get a remainder of 17. Find g of negative 2, also 17. Did you take this notice right here? x plus 2, g of negative 2. Same remainder. Hmm, that's funny. Let's go down to the last one, h of x. So when I divide out this polynomial by x minus 4, I get a remainder of 0, which means x minus 4 is a factor, and 4 would be a 0. Check that out. So I get a 0 here, I get a 0 there. So Looking at the big picture, here we go, big picture, remainder the same. If you take the value, if it's x minus 3, let's call that x minus a. Can we write that down? x minus a. I don't want that highlighter thing. All right, so if we call it x minus a, but then I find the function value at a, they both give me, look, well, when I divide by x minus a, I get a remainder, and then f of a gives me that remainder. Boom. Let's look at this one. This would be x minus negative 2, right? I mean, because it's x plus 2. So that's the same as x minus negative 2. So if I find the function value at negative 2, boom, I get the remainder. Down here, it just so happens it's a 0. So I'm going to kind of work it backwards. If I find a function value and it equals 0, I know that this value, if there's a 4, so that means that x minus 4, that must be a factor. So we learned two things here. Let's write them down. The first thing, and again, these are Mr. Kelly's words. I'm going to simplify it a little bit. If a function is divisible by x minus a, like up here is x minus 3, right? If a function is divisible by x minus a and it has a remainder of r, then if you find the value of f of a, it's going to equal r. Okay, back here, regular talk. If it's, get rid of this. If it's, what am I doing? 
Oh, if it's divisible by x minus a. So let's look at this. x minus a. If you divide it by that and you get a remainder of r, and a it's 42 here in the first example, then if you find the function value at a, the function value of 3 in this case, you'll get the same remainder. All right, that's called the remainder theorem. Simplified. And then we found out that with the last one, which I erased, found it, love undo, that if you find a value and it equals 0, then this value here, that's the value of a. So if h of a equals 0, then x minus a must have been a factor. How do we write that up? Well, I wrote it like this. If f of a equals 0, then x minus a is a factor. We just said that. And a is also 0. Boom. That's the factor theorem. Let's try this one right here. All right. Given k of x equals 8x to the third plus 3x squared plus 37x plus 15, find k of negative 1, and then factor it completely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what they say. We're going to find k of negative 1. All right. So I'm going to evaluate at negative 1. We're plugging that in. So you should work that out yourself. See what we can get. Now, luckily, it's a negative 1, so I can figure that out. Negative 1 in the third power is a negative 1. That's going to make this a negative 8. All right. Hey, that's an ugly 8. And then we get, that's going to be squared, so that's positive 1. So we're going to add 30 to it. That's going to give us a 22. We're going to subtract 37, because that'll be negative. That's going to give us a negative 15 plus 15. So this becomes a 0. How did I know that was going to happen? I knew that was going to happen. So I'm just filling in the extra stuff here to make sure we're clear in our process. If you could do this on your paper, please, go ahead and shrink it and then move it over a little. <laughs> just kidding. Mr. Kelly's a jerk. All right, so then what we need to do is it says factor k of x completely. This is a problem. You probably could have done this before. But when we find k of negative 1, we found out that k of negative 1 is 0. That means that what? We're going to use the factor theorem right now. So that means that if we're doing negative 1, x plus 1 must have been a factor. All right, now we need to factor this completely. So we're going to take this function right here. We're going to divide it by x plus 1. Let's do that over here. Okay, so I've written it out here. We're going to do our long division. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need to, uh, if we're going too fast for you here, though. But here we go. 8x squared. So you multiply through it. Get 8x cubed plus 8x squared. We're going to draw the line and subtract. That's going to give us a 22x squared. Bring down the 37, which, by the way, never works out well. Let's see how this works. So we got x, 22x squared. That's plus 22x. Multiplied through, we get 22x squared. 22x times 1 is a positive 22x. Now we subtract. So 37 minus 22, that's a 15x. Drop down to 15. And how do you go from an x to a 15x? That's plus 15. Boom. So that gives me 15x plus 15. This worked out well. So this, all right, what do we do? This is just like the last unit here. We have a huge polynomial. We just divided out x plus 1. So now we know that it's x plus 1 times 8x squared plus 22x plus 15. Guess what? This one factors. That'll factor into x plus 1. And then how do we factor this bad boy? So multiplying outside a and c, we get 120. Inside's 22. So we need two numbers that multiply to 120. How about 12 and 10? Can we use those? So 8x squared plus 12x plus 10x. Ooh, it's getting hard now because this is tiny on my... Tiny on my screen. Gonna have to zoom. Let's zoom. Okay, lots of room now. So, 8x squared, two numbers that multiply to 120, they have to add to 22, so that's a 12x and a 10x. Let's take out a 4x. We're left with 2x plus 3. Let's take out a 2, 5. Let's take out a 5 there. We're left with 2x plus 3. Now we can take the 2x plus 3 out, so 2x plus 3 times 4x plus 5. And that is just this crazy function that we have, so we can just plug that in over here. 
So 2x plus 1, sorry, x plus 1 times 2x plus 3 times 4x plus 5. That is the complete factored form of this function right here. Whew, that's crazy. All right, you know what I should probably do because they give it to us as a function? Let's go ahead and write this as k of x. So let's write k of x equals, and that will be our fact. It's like it's a Monday over here. It's like a Monday. All right, that's our complete factored form of that function. That was a lot of work. Maybe I should leave you more room in that packet. All right, so the next one, create a polynomial that has, I'm going to clean this up a little, zeros of 4, negative 3, and 1, and negative 1 half. Yeah. Well, this isn't difficult because we just learned, right, that if the zeros are 4, the, well, we kind of knew this before, too, that x minus 4 must have been a factor, and we know that x plus 3 must have been a factor, and now this is the crazy one. How do you get, like, we had some equation, and the answer was negative 1 half. Well, we divided by 2, so there must have been a 2x equals negative 1, Right, that's how you get negative one half, and then I'm going to back it up one more. I'm going to add one to both sides, so two x plus one must have equaled zero. So this zero right here corresponds with the root of two x plus one. Let's put that over here. Two x plus one. All right. So create a polynomial. So I'll just call it p of x for polynomial equals two x plus one, x minus four, and x plus three. Now. What if they ask you to write it in standard form? What does that mean? That means you have to multiply it all out. All right, let's do that. So x squared, this is going to give you a negative 4x and a positive 3x. That's minus 1x and minus 12, right? That's those two when you multiply it out. We need to multiply that by 2x plus 1. So if you remember how to do that, we're going to multiply all of that out. And we should get a final answer of... Okay, I had to zoom and clear that up a little bit. If you multiply this all out, you know how to do that. I don't need to show all that work done. You're going to get 2x cubed minus x squared minus 25x minus 12. But again, do that. Like, do that work and multiply it out. Make sure you get that. That way you're learning how to do this and you don't fail the mastery check. Last type of problem that I'll let you try to yourself. It says find the value of k such that x cubed minus kx squared plus 2 all over k minus 1 has a remainder of 8. Now, here's the thing. Can I tell you the thing? Here's the thing. This looks like a hard problem. That looks hard, but it's not because, look, they're telling you the remainder equals 8. All right, so that means that when you plug in, all right, we're going to use our remainder theorem here. If we plug in, all right, so the, pretend this is a function here. So the function, let's find f of, what would we have to find? This is minus 1, so let's find f of 1. That should give us the remainder, right? The remainder is 8. So f of 1 we know is 8. So if f of 1, that's of this top function right here, just on the top. So if f of 1 is 8, that means if I plug in, let's do f of 1. f of 1 would be 1 to the third power minus k, but I know x is 1, so it would be 1 squared. See, I'm plugging a 1 in because f of 1 is 8 to all the x's. All this should equal 8. Well, look, this is not a difficult problem. 1 cubed is 1. 1 squared is 1. So it's just minus k plus 2. All that equals 8. Well, what do we got here? So negative k, 1 plus 2 is 3. That equals 8. Negative k will equal 5. So k equals negative 5. Done. Done with that one. Did you see how that works? So if they tell you the remainder, then you know if you plug it in here at that value of A, that it should all equal whatever the remainder is. That's the remainder theorem. All right, so just plug in your values of X, whatever A is, and then solve it for K, and you're good to go. All right, pause the video and try the last two. You should do the last two by yourself. Go. Pause the video. Go. Okay, so it's first one. Show that X to the 51st minus 21X plus 20 is divisible by X minus 1. All right. So this will be divisible by, can we use different words, please? Divisible by x minus 1. That means that x minus 1 is a factor. That's a different way to say it. All right, so this function here, let's call it f of x. I don't like how they don't, maybe I should include that from now on, but that's, 
All right, so f of x equals this ugly function here, but it's divisible by x minus 1, x minus one only when f of 1, because that would be the value of a, would equal 0. Right, that would be a 0, so it would be divisible by that. So plug in f of 1, blah, 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 we get a 0. Therefore, x minus 1 has to be a factor. I just showed that x minus 1 is a factor and therefore divisible by. They mean the same thing. All right, and for the last one, find a value of g such that who has a remainder of negative 9. That's like the other one we just did. Okay, then the last problem, which I have to admit, I just recovered from the worst problem I've ever written in, in flipmath.com because I had g's, negative 9's, 3's, negative 3's were plugging in. Everything went crazy. Let's look at this. a has to equal negative 3. I'm going to try my best. I'm, my handwriting is terrible. I'm going to try to this. All right, but so if a is negative 3, that's where we're going to plug it in. That means that this, the remainder theorem says if, if I evaluate f of negative 3, then this whole thing should equal negative 9. That's what the remainder should be, negative 9. So here we go. I'm going to write it up here. So negative 9 should equal, when I plug a negative 3 in here, so I'm going to plug in a negative 3, negative 3, by the way, that goes into the x. So I'm not going to switch anything up. Let's just keep the w where it is. So negative 9 equals w times negative 3 to the third power, that's this, minus w times negative 3 minus x squared, and x is negative 3 again. This was crazy. Now we just have to simplify this, but it, it's not too bad. There's just a lot of negatives. So negative 9 equals negative 3 to the third power is negative 27. I'm going to write that first because we like to write our coefficients first. Then we have negative 3 times negative w. That's a positive 3w. And then we have negative 3 squared. You've got to be careful of your signs. You've got to do that first. That's a positive 9, so you have to subtract 9. All right, so I'm going to combine like terms on the right. Uh, that's going to give me negative 20. Ooh, what do we got here? Negative, 20, so negative 24w minus 9. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So 0 will equal negative 24w. I divide by negative 24. Woo, I get 0. This was a hot mess. I got I to gotta tell you, that used to be a g, and that used to be like a negative 9, and there were 9s and g's, and I was just, it was, I had to change it. So that's it. There's your uh, first lesson in uh, Unit 2. I wish you the best of luck. This is Mr. Kelly and Kaiser Slaughter. Remember, it's nice to be important, more important to be nice. Zoop!